My name is Fatima Deoji. I am the marketing director of one of the largest business houses in Africa. I'm the author of Marketing for an African Powerhouse. I am the founder of Educate, Empower, and Inspire, a platform that I started seven years ago to help people unleash their potential. I'm a golfer, I'm a fitness enthusiast, and I'm a mentor. Now, you guys are probably wondering, why am I starting my talk this way? And it's because most of you know me by these titles. You know me because you probably sat through one of my seminars. Maybe you attended a motivational talk. Maybe you watched a fitness video. Or maybe you read my book. You see, just like titles, we place significant value on the final product of things. And we often undermine the process. So let me give you an example. Whether it's a cold mo soda you're drinking on a hot summer day, please remember I'm a marketer after all, <laughs> or it's that movie you're so excited to go watch with your friends. Maybe it's that football team that you're cheering for, or it's that person that you love, admire, and look up to. Remember this that that soda went through research and development, several manufacturing processes, marketing and distribution before you could enjoy it. That movie that you love so much took years to plan, refine, and shoot. That football team that you are cheering for required its players to train day and night, rain or shine, and that person that person that you admire and you look up to and you want to be like, probably went through a whole lot of pain, adversity, and failure before they could become who they are. Like I said, you know me by my titles. Today, I'm going to tell you the stories behind these titles. So this is the first time I'm sharing these stories, so please excuse me if I do get emotional at times. Let me begin on February 14th, 2017. It was Valentine's Day, and I was kicked out on my, of my own house by my then husband. We had a fight, but not big enough for such a drastic response. I remember I was so confused and shook that the person I believed loved me could do what he did. He explained that he needed 10 days and that he would be back in those 10 days. 10 days turned into two weeks, and three, and then four. And in those weeks, I was in complete turmoil. Mentally, physically, emotionally, I was finished. I remember spending most of my days hooked to an IV while still fighting for my marriage. You see, all marriages have their ups and downs, right? And I'm pretty sure I made a few mistakes along the way. But little did I know what I was about to discover. I remember the exact time I fell to the ground when I saw intimate photos of him with my friend. Well, my ex-friend. He didn't need any space. He was having an affair. The pain? The pain was unbearable. And I really thought I was going to be finished at that time. But the real blow, the real blow was that his entire family, his mother, his father, his sixth sister, and his best friend, who was often a guest at our house, were all very well aware of this affair and encouraged it, while leaving me under the illusion that they were on my side, helping me with my marriage. You see, I lost a sense of humanity that day. I've been raised by a mother who has only taught us kindness. She always tells us, if you can't do good, don't do bad. So you can only imagine my entire worldview had changed. In the months that followed, I was in complete despair. I couldn't get out of the morning. I couldn't function. Things were difficult. Just doing the basic necessary things became hard. And honestly speaking, I did not think I was going to survive. 
when you're in the midst of that much trauma, I mean, who really thinks they would, right? But for some reason, I am still standing before you here today. Now you guys might be wondering, how did I get here? How did I become this person? I'll get to that, but not before I tell you my second story. On October 11th, 2018, I got a frantic phone call at 6.30 a.m. in the morning telling me that my brother had gone missing. For nine days and nine nights, our entire family was in the state of despair. For nine days and nine nights, the entire country was in standstill. I remember begging God and saying every prayer that I could remember to bring my brother back. I remember feeling guilty and feeling a sense of regret because I hadn't spent enough time with him. I remember feeling helpless because there was nothing I could do to bring my brother back. But the worst feeling, the worst feeling was that I was scared. I was scared because I didn't know how we would tell our mother that her son was missing. I thought to myself, I just went through one horrific period of trauma. I cannot do it again. But for some reason, I am sta still standing before you here today. On February 22nd of this year, I lost my best friend to cancer. It came out of nowhere. It spread too quickly, taking her away way too young. Leila and I met in 2006 when I first moved to DC, and we connected over a cup of coffee and our homesickness. And since then, we had become inseparable. You see, people always tell you, right? It's gonna get better, things will get better, time will heal. And you can't fault them for this because that is the only thing that they know. But there are days when I cannot comprehend what has happened. And then there are nights when I go to sleep and I keep getting flashbacks of our times together. But worst off is just out of reflex and habit, I pick up the phone to call my friend and I dial a number that no longer exists. You see, just months before her passing, Leila and I traveled to Lebanon together. This was actually a photo that she had taken of me in a beautiful place called Baalbak. We talked about our dreams and our goals and our plans. And little did I know, this was the last time I would travel with her again. Again, unbearable amount of pain, but for some reason, I am still standing before you here today. So, why am I telling you such painful stories? Because despite the tears and the heartache and the loss, I can tell you this, I am so, so grateful for this pain. I'm grateful because it has taught me humility. I am grateful because it has taught me kindness. I'm grateful because it has made me empathetic and I can connect with people better. The process of pain, you know, it builds a certain kind of character. It builds a certain kind of individual and a certain kind of resilience that I believe no amount of adversity can ever take down. So since I've been through so much pain and since pain, loss, and Adversity are all, you know, part and parcel of life and inevitable. I have managed to figure out ways to deal with the pain and to make me who I am today. Today, I want to share these lessons with you, just in the hopes to inspire you that you can too move on in the pain or the loss or the failure or the adversity in your life. So let me begin. Keep moving. I know it gets tough and it's hard and sometimes you get tired and you get weak, but just keep moving. If you can't work for eight hours a day, just start with one. If you can't run, start by walking. 
And if you have no idea how your day is going to unfold, just start by getting out of bed. Slow down. Now, I know it sounds ironic because I told you to keep moving, but stop living your life on autopilot. Focus on building relationships, not just connections. Spend time with the people that you love because that's what matters. You see, my mind, I have this mind, it's on overdrive, I think it's genetic. But basically what happens is that I have to constantly be doing something. And so I realize the pain forced me to slow down. It forced me to reflect. It forced me to take the time I needed to get the help I needed. It forced me to build the relationships that I had lost. And most of all, I figured out what truly made me happy. Fake it until you believe it. In the midst of trauma, the more you tell yourself you can do it, the more you can. This is science. So whether it was on a stage like this, or it was in the boardroom when I was speaking to my team, I would get up, dress up, and I would show up. I would talk to people about valuing yourself at that time when I had no value for myself. I would talk to my team about building self-confidence when I had no confidence left. I remember that I would talk to people about being resilient in the face of trauma when I was broken. This is not hypocrisy, my friends. This is self-talk. I did it so much and I did it so often that I don't know when it happened, but I started to believe in myself again. Be kind. Always, always be kind. Be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself and you'll realize it'll create a ripple effect. And you're going to be kind to others and you're going to forgive others. You see, the reason I am who I am, the reason I've become this person, is because I've learned to forgive those people that have hurt me. Learn to be grateful. This is so important. You know, when my mind takes a turn and I get overwhelmed and I'm in this negative space, I go sit by my cliff. And I call it my cliff because I've taken over that cliff now. I go sit by my cliff and I stare at the water and I start to count everything that I'm grateful for. From the food on my table to my parents, to just the breath in my lungs. So if you're not doing it already, start listing down what you're grateful for. Finally, while I do not have a manual for dealing with pain, I can assure you of this one. Find a purpose that is greater than yourself. Life is not all about you. And if it is about you, then you're in trouble. Because you're going to hit something in life that's much, much tougher than you. And it's going to test your will, and it's going to test your heart. And if it is about you, and only you, you're broken. My purpose is to make a difference. It is to push the human race forward. Whether it is to one person, or, it's, or it is to a hundred. I am so grateful that I found my purpose along the way. And I will tell you this, if it wasn't for this purpose, I would not be standing before you here today. I want to end by saying something that I believe will put all this in focus. Sometimes moments of pain are necessary for us to grow because they teach us to find a purpose that is greater than our pain. Thank you very much.